let's say you're triggered, you're intensely triggered, you feel the sensations of limitation, you give that to the cameraman as well. You give that to the great I am. You give that to the I consciousness. Because where is it happening? You, the feeling of your body feeling triggered and your emotions being triggered and your nervous system freaking out, all of that is being registered. Consciousness is responsible for that observation. It's being experienced by the I am. So give it away, project it. It belongs to that presence, that consciousness, that beingness. And then again, what happens is you put your sense of me right here somewhere. So you, you suddenly are back in that space where you see, first of all, I'm not this. This all happens inside of the I am. The I am could also be visualized as a snow globe or a sphere inside of which everything happens. And the feeling of consciousness then would simply be, or I am consciousness would be the edge of that bubble, the substratum, what the bubble is made of. That's the feeling of presence, consciousness, isness, beingness, I am, I exist. But since you give even that away and you visualize it outside of yourself, you actually place yourself slightly above it experientially. I mean, I'm just totally projecting onto you that this is, that you'll have the same experience as I do. Uh, but mechanically, I believe we're all the same. So it works the same for everyone. So at least give it a shot, see if it works. And you can do it right now. Something, something is aware of your body hearing my voice. Now it's very tempting to believe that it's you that is receiving my voice outside yourself. But the sensation of you over here, the world or me out there, I am out here, right? You're out there or you're out here. I'm out there for you. All of that is just a sensation. But you're fooled by it. You're thinking from inside of the sensation. So it seems real. But if you observe it from outside the sensation, you see the feeling of separation is not separate from the I am. So you can feel as separate as your mind wants to create the feelings of separation. A feeling of separation happens. Let's say you're having a feeling. It's happening inside the I am. It's non-separate from the observer, from the consciousness. So it resolves everything. Just keep giving everything away, disown everything back to the I am. It's such a simple practice and it's immediately, it starts to work, you'll see. You gotta try it out. Again, all you do when you give away your pleasure or you give away your pain to the I am, all you're doing is you're setting yourself free from the body identification because you're giving whatever your feelings you're having you're giving it away to god to isness to presence to the bubble of consciousness to the experiential realm of the creator to the perceiver to the experience or to awareness whatever you want to label that which remains when you're not thinking or before you start using words that sheer simple existence that feeling of i am which is the first concept it's the first principle it's the first creation and it's the only creation because everything else happens inside of it. The I am is the first, only, and final, when you're on your way back, when you're on your way down, when you begin the process of evolution, the, the isness, the beingness, the presence, the consciousness, it's the first manifestation. Even though it looks like there's other consequent manifestations, you begin to realize it's all one manifestation. So it's the first, the only, and then when you go back to go beyond it, you realize, it is the final concept. So when you let go of thoughts and you give it all away to the primary concept, then you're free from all the variety, from all the chaos, from all the identification and separation beliefs. And you start to feel the sense of inclusiveness, everything dancing inside of the beingness somehow, including your body. So you no longer really feel like you're your body. The more you practice this, you see that everything is your body. Basically, this whole thing is your body. You just thought it was inside the nervous system, but it's not. It's all part of it. That's also where love begins to come from. And you can actually feel inside the nervous system of other people. You can scan them for diseases. and You can just start to feel and see things the more you practice this. Because it actually is your body. There's no limitation to that. But if you always locate yourself here, you're not going to have that expansion. You're not going to have that sense of warmth, of oneness, of sort of oceanic, wave-like presence. You can never have that from the body point of view. If you do, it's always going to be egoic. It's always going to be owned. It's always going to be claimed as long as you project the I am 
eye feeling into the body as a small portion of the entire painting of the universe. And for as long as you do that, it doesn't matter how spiritual your experiences are, from that sense of I and the body, it's always going to be polluted, it's always going to be a fetish, it's never going to be a pure spiritual offering. You know, we're talking about like the tantric kind of things, for example, where that becomes very obvious, where it can be a very pure thing, but it can also be very sort of polluted, like where the pleasure gets polluted, or any field, but that's just one where it's like mixed in with spirituality and the spiritual ego and like the glorification and like I just want that. So it's a good example to use, but that's all because it's still experienced from the point of view of I'm the body. That assumption has not yet been annihilated. It's not yet been seen through. It's not yet been let go of. But if you give also your sexual experiences, pleasurable experiences, meditative experiences, away to the I am, you realize, oh, the body meditating, because it feels it wants to or needs to, actually also happens inside the I am. So somehow, the me that I thought I was is sitting down in a particular posture to realize the I amness inside of which the meditator is meditating, trying to realize that inside of which it's already happening. If you don't project the sense of me into the body to begin with, but you let it be free or out there, then the sense of oneness begins to emerge, and that is meditation. Then you just maintain awareness of that I am, which cannot be pinpointed to be here or there or everywhere or nowhere. It's that point inside of which all locations occur. All possibilities occur due to consciousness. All experience occurs inside of consciousness. It's that simple. And you can realize it now. You can feel it. You can be it. And you can do that while you're walking around. And if it feels like you're sort of shifting into weird states or whatever, then don't do it while you're walking around on a busy street or don't do it if you're driving. Use common sense. But my experience has been that this has been a very clean experience and I'm more aware, even though I'm not aware as I usually would be. Let's say the normal state is I am walking and I'm paying attention to walking. And maybe I'm walking barefoot somewhere in India and there's like thorns and stuff. So I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm the thinker, I'm the doer, I'm like registering from my point of view that there's a thorn over there, so oh, I'm going to put it right there, I'm the doer of that. What I've noticed, but try it out for yourself using common sense, don't do it in the most dangerous, physically chaotic situations, do it in peaceful, safe situations. What I've found is that when I quote unquote zoom out and give this back to the I am, realize that it's the I am that's creating all this, suddenly my body just goes however it goes. I'm not even really aware of the body because I'm aware of the I am that's aware of the body. So I'm right here. So my awareness is expanded beyond its regular point and I'm aware of the root. I'm maintaining awareness of the beingness inside of which the walking is projected and is being experienced. Somehow everything works perfectly. Somehow everything flows perfectly in that state. And I notice that when I'm thinking again as a body, as a mirror, that's when I make mistakes, more so. And there, there's just a certain flow and in intelligence that happens. Another way in which I notice this is like doing yoga. If I do yoga as a body, and let's say it's, it's, a, it's a pose where you're like balancing on one foot or something like that, you're like this because you're the body because you're the doer of it whereas if you then start to focus on the beingness which experiences the body then suddenly the body just balances itself you don't have to do anything there's no control it's the beingness that's completely stable which is what yoga is a method into you'll notice this with everything that you do just give it back to god and all is fine do the same with your emotions don't own them because then they're your problem don't own them because then they become your responsibility, they become your karma, they become your process. You know, you're going to move through these healing phases anyway, the body, the emotions, they're going to unravel anyway. The more you give it up to God, the more you have faith and surrender and don't think anything about your emotions. Don't come to conclusions about yourself and other people. Just give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. Keep giving it to the I am. It's the I am that's experiencing the emotions. Not you, unless you say that's you. Technically, if you observe it objectively, it is the consciousness of which, which appears to the facelessness of you. Somehow, magically, this consciousness appears to you. You just projected yourself all the way into the dream inside the dreamer. But technically, you are aware of the one who is experiencing everything. 
So don't project yourself inside of that dream, inside of a little container of that painting, and then say that everything happens to you. That's the big mistake of body identification. That's why this whole spirituality thing of embodiment is kind of, it just doesn't go that far, in my opinion, the whole, no, you should come into your body and stuff. There's some relevances to that for certain individuals at certain moments, but it's just because people don't understand this. They, can't, they haven't gone beyond that primary identification. So they reduce spirituality to having something to do with the body. And it just simply doesn't have anything to do with the body. It doesn't deny the body, but it, it's not originating in the body. The body is a great tool. It's a great method. But spirituality doesn't really have anything to do with feeling the ground underneath your feet and like feeling the air fill your lungs. And that's, that's all good. That's a step up from unconsciously scrolling on your phone or like being busy all the time, not, not being present. It's definitely a step up. But it's just to clear the space, to be able to see clearly so you can expand and give everything back to God. If you give everything back to God, simultaneously you disown everything inside this, and you place yourself right there in between the absolute and the consciousness, which is now responsible for your world. You're not responsible for your world. Again, doesn't mean that outwardly you don't act as if you are responsible for your actions and your words. It simply means that even when that's happening, that too, you taking accountability and like following certain agreements when you made that agreement or whatever it is, you taking responsibility for your emotions and expressing that, that too is happening inside the I am, not to you. Again, that's not you either. So in the truest sense of the word, not in a relative sense, in the more absolute sense of the word, nothing has ever happened to you. I guarantee you when you get a glimpse of that freedom, you'll start to appreciate the broccoli required to get to the ice cream. Suddenly you're like, fuck, I want to feel this way. I want to practice. Because then it gets really amazing.